Now, there's another thing that's actually really, really bad with the Google Android or, or a iPhone, and that's the device identity. And yeah. it's based on the IMEI, the International Mobile Equipment Identity. And that is unique to every phone. That's basically the serial number of every phone. Now, they can take that and they can build another ID that's on Android. It's called the Android Device ID. And that's built for notifications, which is also a semi-permanent ID. On Apple, there's the advertising ID. There's also a similar advertising ID on, on Google. So because of these identifiers, what happens is they are using the phone now as a cross-device tracker. So it doesn't matter what device you use. They say to you, oh, you need two-factor authentication, 2FA. So then you say, oh, uh, oh, okay, I guess I'm forced to do 2FA with my phone number. But they don't really care about the phone number anymore. That's not really what they're doing. They want you to load the Google app on the phone because the Google app can see the identifier for the IMEI, for uh, the device IDs, and can have a certain match that what you do on your computer, even at work, is the same as on your phone, that you are the same person. And they can then use that to track you. And the Google phone doesn't have any of that. There's actually, since Android 10, you cannot see a device ID of any sort, IMEI, phone numbers, all of that, unless you're a system app. Well, on a de Google phone, the, the way that the phone is de Google is you're using open source, Android open source project. So I looked at the source code. There is no way to see any of that because that's in the basic permissions. And if you know SE Linux, so SE Linux being the security framework limits every app. Every app has to be compiled with SE Linux. And the permissions are baked into the executable. So you can't like do anything that's outside of the permission base of SE Linux. And that's how way Android is set up. So in the case of, of a de Google phone, no app can come in at the system level that has any rights beyond what is granted by SE Linux. For this reason, it is impossible for an app to gain access to the IMEI and all that because there are no system apps that are not open source. Everything is open source. And for that reason, one of the things that a phone does, a the Google phone does that's really different is that the phone has no identity. That's probably the number one feature, no identity. So this is something I teach you know, people in the privacy business because they don't understand this. They're, they're relating it to cybersecurity. In cybersecurity, you, you're trying to protect the input and output into the phone. You're trying to actually block anyone seeing anything, which is almost impossible on a phone because there's so much telemetry going on in various aspects. So the goal that I found works best is not to worry about what Google can see in various places, but to take out the identity. If they can't attribute an action to one specific device, one specific identity, the AI cannot make use of it. So you have to go back. You know, it, I have a, a data science background because I was doing medical uh, information, collecting medical data. And uh, we were doing AI on that at the time when I was doing that. And we understand that, you know, you got to collect the data. In fact, in medical, you, you're supposed to strip out the identifier. Uh, it, in Google Apple world, that's not true. The identifiers are in there. So the solution to not allowing them to get control of us and our ideas and what we really do is to block the identity. So if you just to, to put this in a kind of a big picture, there is a project and I don't want to mention the company name again. Uh, because every time I do it, I lose views. So it may be tied to some filter at Google. <laughs> but uh, uh, Google has a division called Jigsaw. Google, uh, Jigsaw has a partner in the UK. Mm -hmm. And this partner is tied to collecting information about certain groups and taking action against them. It, originally, the original project by, by this company was to find the... Muslim extremists in London. That was the original project. And that was the justification. They said, hey, this is a good project because look what we're doing. We're uh, saving the world from extremists. And nowadays that, uh, that same group has now actually have made a map of people, for example, who have anti-vax views in 
various places in the U.S. They actually have a map. They have, I, I looked at the map. I actually posted a video of the map on my uh, uh, posted a picture of the video in the video of that map where I I picked a place like Texas, and you can actually see the dots where people's Google IDs identify the locations of people with anti-vax views. So you can actually count by area how many people are, have anti-vax views. My goodness, what an invasion of privacy. Is, is this something they just have on their website? Is that right? It was, and then I can't find it anymore. Maybe because they published <laughs> it and they, they didn't want to you know, promote that anymore. I, I heard you say you heard something. They try and filter the results. Is that right? On Google to try and influence what you believe. Is it something like that? Is that right? Well, they do using this jigsaw. Uh, yeah. But I'm saying that even on YouTube, I don't know if what I say causes them to affect you know, my viewership, depending on the topic, because some of these topics that I talk about don't get any views. I, I don't really know why. If I'm some random person and I want to search for a topic, it changes the Google results when I search to try and influence me. Is, is that something you've said? Yeah. Yes, that is exactly what it does. And yeah. uh, what what happens is at least this company does. They actually have many, many uh things that they do. But this one is a specific one they published. This is something that actually stated that they do. They they said their goal is to affect the first page results on Google search, depending on what it is you do. So if you or what what it is you believe. So if they find that they want influence to believe, they change the first page results on Google. Snowden, I believe, was the one who said this, that the that the project that was done in the UK actually went further. They actually changed the internet for certain individuals in London using this algorithm. So I don't know exactly what that means. You know, I, I technologically, I'm thinking of uh, packet substitution kind of things, you know, something that uh, actually intercept the packet because it's a website, you can do that. I, that's some of the things that, you know, I don't know because it's not published, but the stuff I'm talking about is published. They, you know, that's, they, they actually stated that's what they do. But it's worry. It's worrying that they can change. Sorry to interrupt. They can change the results based on an identifier of who you are and, and seemingly what you believe, and they want to influence what you believe, right? Right. So they actually have a database of each one of us. In fact, Google was planning on doing what they call cohorts. They wanted to change the way they track for advertising by assigning a, every person to a cohort based on what you believe. So you can have a. You may be in a cohort of uh, conservatives versus liberals versus. Uh, sports interested people or computer geeks and so they, they can create as many cohorts as possible for each of us and then you can belong to a thousand cohorts and by doing that they can identify your grouping and then have the ai judge you in some way and the judging of course as far as the published information is is that google changes their search results uh, presumably for some target in theory they're not doing it for every single person they're doing it for the target people so some people are not affected if they're you know in line with what google wants they don't they don't do anything